Land Birds is a short film that follows two sisters over the course of one day as they go on a road trip to go bird watching. Tanyi and Misan have recently migrated from Korea to the United States after losing their mom. Due to problems in their family, Tanyi lives on her own, having left her kid sister behind to live with her aunt. On Misan's birthday, Tanyi returns, hoping to repair their estranged relationship. But Misan has other plans in mind, and the two sisters are forced to confront their differing dreams for their future, as jets rumble in the distance of their military town. This summer of 2023 marks 70 years since the Korean Armistice Agreement, which split Korea into two artificial regions at the 38th parallel. The dividing line, chosen by the United States without any consultation, separated millions of Korean families, never to be reunited, and became the basis for the illegal occupation of Korean land by the United States military, which continues today. And for what reason is the American serviceman and the United Nations forces still in Korea? For one continuing essential purpose, to help peace survive. The fact that many Americans don't know is that the Korean War never ended. 70 years after what was supposed to be a temporary ceasefire, the division continues. The U.S. remains in Korea, having determined in 1945 that a civil war in Korea would be in the U.S. interest, and that a divided Korea, stripping Korean people of their own sovereignty, continues to be in the U.S. interest today. Today, the largest overseas U.S. military base is in Pyeongtaek, South Korea. There are around 30,000 U.S. troops on more than 70 bases, occupying stolen land from Korean villagers, raising historic and spiritual landmarks, contaminating the areas with water and lead poisoning, all while charging the brunt of the costs of building bases and cleaning up the contamination to the Korean government and people. Separation and estrangement is a through line in my own family history. Through this project, I wanted to trace this history, to ask, how did we get here? And where do we go from here? As a disciplinary framework for my project, I draw on political philosophy and critical theory. In neo-colonialism, the last stage of imperialism, Kwame Nkrumah lays out the defining characteristics of a neo-colony, explaining how foreign aid, whether through financial capital or military presence, is used to exploit rather than to advance the interests of the local people, increasing the gap between the rich and the poor. Through militarism, the U.S. ensures not only a raw physical power over its neo-colonies through military violence, but attains cultural power convincing the people in its neo-colonies that the U.S. is a superior place to live, where one might find redemption from the poverty of the homeland. Likewise, I draw on Walter Benjamin's work in Critique of Violence, where he posits that law and violence are fundamentally connected, such that violence is the means by which law is created and maintained. Say, the institution of borders after a war, much like how two white men in the United States chose to divide Korea, are an example of how law is fundamentally created through and preserved by violence. U.S. military violence, then, seeks constantly to create and preserve law in places where it should not have jurisdiction. Such work by Benjamin and Nkrumah then shows how there can be a direct relationship between homeland and diaspora, neo-colony and migration, cause and effect. Tanyi and Misan's circumstances are one such narrative. Their story is derived not only from theory, but from the lived experiences of my own family, friends, and community members. Landbirds casts these philosophical and political discussions in the medium of film working alongside an incredible collective of more than 20 crew members from camera, lighting, sound, 
directing, designing, producing, and other production members. We strove to do justice to our passion for the craft of filmmaking. From pre-production to principal photography, our crew members meticulously prepared within each department. We ran rehearsals, drew up design plots, conducted gear checks, and woke up before the crack of dawn to time out twilight and sunrise sequences. But the interdisciplinary nature of the project comes from synthesis of theory and practice. As I interrogated how to best integrate our philosophical, political, and personal concerns into a narrative short film, I was inspired greatly by What is to be Done by Jean-Luc Godard, in which the famed filmmaker puts forth a series of dialectical propositions, beginning with one, we must make political films, and two, we must make films politically. In the following list, in What is to be Done, he explains what the difference is between these two statements. To carry out one is to make descriptions of situations, to carry out two is to make concrete analysis of a concrete situation. To carry out one is to give a complete view of events in the name of truth in itself. To carry out two is not to fabricate over complete images of the world in the name of relative truth. To carry out two is to dare to know where one is and where one has come from, to know one's place in the process of production in order then to change it. What does it mean to say something further than the failure of the American dream? How might we dig deeper into its contradictions, which are rooted not only here in the U.S., but in the countries it occupies abroad, where the dream first becomes implanted in our minds as such? Tracing contradictions means tracing history, from the U.S. waged acts of war and subsequent neocolonialism that create unlivable conditions to the promises of freedom and opportunity that the U.S. inundates people with, coercing them to a country that will give them inadequate conditions for their survival, and even going so far as to incarcerate or deport them for attempting to survive. To make a film politically is, as Godard says, to study the contradiction and speak to it forcefully. Land Birds, as a politically made interdisciplinary project, is an offering to my community as explication, agitation, and ultimately, imagination. Theory and practice allow us to engage in imagination, better ways for the world to be. Worlds that remain in Misan's imagination, where her older sister is more resourced, where they can live together, be happier, safer, where communities are stronger for flying together.